Hello everyone, it's me Sarah. Welcome to my channel, A Curious Cuttlefish. Today we're going to be prepping yarn to dye. Hello everyone and to all of my subscribers, welcome to another one of my video series. In this series, I am going to be taking you through my dye process day by day materials that I use and just how long it takes me to create my yarn dyeing adventure videos for you. So welcome and I hope that you find this little series fun and educational. So let me start off with telling you a list of the things that I'm going to be using to dye my yarns today and if you are interested in doing it along with me you can gather these items as well. They are not too hard to find, and I've tried to keep it that way. So I will have the list up above. I will also have a list down below in the description box if you are interested in that. Um, so first off, you want to decide on what types of fibers you are going to be using to dye. It is easier to dye protein fibers, so those tend to be animal fibers like wool or um, mohair. There's Angora, there's, um, uh, there's a variety of fibers that you can dye. Cotton is another fiber that you can dye. I do not recommend dyeing acrylic just because I use heat when I dye my materials. And so as a result, if you use acrylic fibers to dye and you add heat, um, those acrylic fibers can melt and it will really change the texture of the yarn that you are producing. So I do not advise dyeing acrylic. Um, I prefer to use wool or other um, fibers that will take up the dye a lot better. If it is your first time dyeing, I highly suggest using a wool or a super wash wool. Um, keep in mind that if you are looking into doing wool for dyeing, it is a lot more expensive than acrylic. Um, a superwash is even more expensive than just regular wool, but the colors come up a lot more vibrantly on it. Um, wool will soak up those colors very easily. Cotton is a little finicky and it takes a little bit more work, so I will be addressing cotton later on this month and how I go about dyeing those and what dyes I use and recommend. So for this dyeing series, I am going to be dyeing that yarn for my birthday giveaway winners. And so I am using this yarn right here. This is an ice yarn that I had purchased. Um, this is a Super Kid Mohair and Extra Fine Merino Wool Blend. And so they come in these 50 gram balls, just like this. And it is possible to dye your yarn when it is in a little ball like this. It is, um, you can choose to dye it like this. You can choose to dye it in a hank. You can choose to dye it in a cake. Um, like I said, later on this month, I'll be making videos showing how dyeing the yarn in different forms will affect the way that it comes out after you do your dye process. So I am going to be hanging this yarn up before I dye it. So I will move my camera over and show you guys how I prep the yarn after I finish going over the list of supplies that you will need for this yarn dyeing adventure. So other than your yarn and fibers, which I've already talked about, you are going to need some dyes to work with. I think the most affordable option that you can get if you want a wide variety of colors is getting either food coloring or a egg dyeing kit that uses liquid coloring. Um, so I got a, a little pack of food coloring from my local grocery store. Um, you can also sometimes find food coloring at your local dollar store. I did get some food coloring from there and I am going to be using them for the dyeing that I am doing. Um, not necessarily today, which you will find out. Um, I'm going to be starting to dye tomorrow. But that is a part of the dyeing process. But 
I recommend food coloring for your first time dyeing. It is a very nice, affordable dye that you can buy. If you are looking to do a one color, I find RIT dyes are wonderful. They adhere to the fibers very well. I have not had any problems with them, and I highly suggest them. It's just you end up spending about 4 to $5 per color for each RIT dye as opposed to spending three to four dollars for a whole pack of food coloring where you can get a wide variety of colors. So up to you. I will be using both RIT dyes and um, my food coloring for the dyeing today. There is differences in how they will appear on the fibers. So first time dyeing, definitely use food coloring. Um, so that is the dyes. You also want your dye bath to be slightly acidic. I recommend using vinegar. I add vinegar to my dye bath when I am bringing it to a boil. And so have some vinegar on hand. For the most part, most of us do, and you only need a few tablespoons of it to add into your pot. You might only need one tablespoon if you're only dyeing a small bit of yarn. Um, you need a pot for dyeing your yarn. This is important because even if you are using food-based dyes, if you plan on getting other dyes in the future, you want a pot or a pan that is specific to dyeing fibers. You do not want to mix any food in there in the future. So I recommend either going to a thrift shop, finding a garage sale, and just getting an inexpensive pan that will then be exclusively used for your dyeing purposes. I went to an estate sale to get mine, and I use it exclusively for my dyeing. I then went out later and I bought some chafing dishes, which I can use on the stove from um, Sam's Club because I wanted to be able to dye the same color yarn in larger baths. For the most part, you guys will not need this type of equipment if you are just experimenting with yarn dyeing. Get okay, sorry guys, I had to edit out my phone ringing in the background. Um, so yes. A simple pot or pan will do. And then I always advise to wear an apron and gloves when you're working with dyes because you do not want to stain your hands any colors. Um, I have a bad habit of not always putting on gloves so then I end up with colored hands. So use gloves. It is better. Um, you also should I recommend getting some zip ties? They are very inexpensive and they keep you from burning your hands if you like to move your fibers around while you're dyeing them. I do and I find it easier than just having the tongs that I use to move my fibers around. So every time that you're dyeing any uh, extra utensils or materials you would like to use, make sure that they are exclusively for your fiber dyeing and not being used for food purposes later. Um, tongs are wonderful. You can find them at the local dollar store, so you can keep your costs down with trying out this new um, little hobby. So I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. I went over the dyes, went over the fibers, the pot. Um, I believe that that is the majority of the things that you're going to need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my camera to show you guys how I hank up and prep my yarn before dyeing it. Yes, it is possible to dye the yarn just like this, but for the yarn that I am going to be um, trying, for the colors that I'm going to be trying to get, I want this yarn in a hank. So I am going to reposition this camera um, and we are going to prep this yarn and I will show you guys what I do on day one of my yarn dyeing experience. Okay everyone, so I am in a, a different room but I wanted to show you this is a Swift and this is what I use to prep this yarn right here. Um, so I always try to pull from the center when possible um, for prepping yarns like this just because it'll be easier to continue and I just have it set on a little table right here 
and try to find that end. Here it is. So with this end, when I am starting off on my swift, I take it and I am going to tie it in just a little knot, only once, just so that it stays on there while I get it around a few times so that it will stay put. So now I'm just spinning this a few times. I want to get it on there for a few rounds. And already I have a slight want it to get into any knots. Okay, so I went around a few times. So now I'm going to find that part where I did the knot and pull it out because I don't want it to be attached to here when I am trying to pull this off my swift. So now I am just going to spend some time and get all of this yarn out of a ball and onto here. So this is all I do. I am just spinning this around. There is a little handle on my, I just find it faster to just stick my finger in there and turn it, then holding on to the little handle. That is just my personal preference. Um, I'm sure everybody does it a little differently. So I just have this on one of my little TV um, table things but I can move around from room to room and it just attaches there. So this is how I prep my yarn and get it into hanks. So almost, I think I'm a little more than halfway done. And then once you are done winding your yarn into Hank, getting it all up onto the Swift. And if you do not have a Swift, don't worry. You can always wrap it around a chair. Um, there are other ways that you can prep your yarn and make it into a Hank. You can use a piece of cardboard um, and just wrap it around that. This is the tool that I have, so I enjoy using it because it does make my life easier and it makes the prep work go a bit faster. Okay, so now that is the whole hank. It is all on here. And now you could just leave it like this. I, I like to tie little bits of yarn on three points just to make sure that everything stays together. So I'm going to grab some scissors and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my pair of scissors here. Let me and watch. I lost the end. So let's see if I can locate it. Here it is. Okay, so what I am going to be doing is I'm just going to be cutting three little pieces from here in order to tie around. So I have my three small pieces of yarn and what I do is I will grab about a third and I'm going to put it in here. Then I'm going to take the next third and wrap that and then the next third. So I am, in essence, weaving this little bit in and through. And I am going to tie very loosely at the top. So this is the preparation that I am doing before I even start dyeing. I need to do this with all the yarn that will be dyed. So there's one. I'm going to tie it again here. This will be two. Again, you want to keep this loose. If you make it too tight, it can stop some of the fibers from taking on color. 
we want to make sure that the color can reach through to all of these fibers. So that is why I tie it loosely. We want it to be able to move around inside once it is tied. And now Rocco is visiting me. <laughs> okay. So I'm just tying up this last one and then I will show you. Okay, so now that everything is tied, I can collapse this a bit and take this off to show you guys up close. So this is what I did right here. I am just weaving in and out so that there are three little chunks and I tied it loose enough that the yarn can move around in there and it's not that tight. So I did that in three spots on this hank. So now your yarn should look like this. Okay, and if you are wanting to dye your yarn, it will not be today. It could be today, but you are going to want to let your yarn soak for one to three hours so that it can so that all of the fibers are wet and ready to use up the dye so this is the yarn that i will be using i am going to be soaking my yarn overnight so you will see me again tomorrow um, after the yarn has been soaked overnight then i will be dyeing these fibers so tomorrow's video you will see the dyeing process and then the day after that will be um, the washing and drying process. And then the day after that is usually still drying because it takes a while for the fibers to dry, unless it's very warm and not so humid where you are. Um, and then you'll have the completed yarn. So I am going to go stick this in a little bowl or bin where it is gonna be sitting and soaking overnight. And tomorrow you guys will see me um, prepping and doing the dyeing portion. So thank you so much for joining me for day one of this yarn dye adventure. I will see you guys tomorrow where I will be um, taking out the pre-soaked yarn and prepping the dye. Bye.